All right, everybody. Hi, good evening. I am astro numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn, and you are on Live with Lloyd, where the joy of numerology is the joy of learning and enlightenment. Um, Saturday, this past Saturday, I did a little test pilot. Uh, hopefully, uh, people will be able to see me on Instagram and Facebook or whatever the vehicles may be. Um, but I want to thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing this every Monday and Wednesday at seven o'clock. I'm going to have various topics on the subject of numerology, share some very interesting things with you. And, uh, and the one thing that's very important, I want you to, you know, send in your questions, uh, comments, suggestions, even criticism. I can, I think I can stand it. You know what I'm saying? We should be able to stand it every now and then. So this is the thing where I want to, um, Thank those who will be joining. And um, I see I made a couple of, well, I didn't make a couple of errors. I was just a little nervous as I am right now. Uh, one of the people I have to thank more than anybody right now is my brother, King Simon, who really brought me 21st century. Uh, this is one of the fantastic brothers. Uh, we are both astronumerologists, except he's now a numeral vader, an author, publisher, lecturer, traveler, et cetera. So, um, what I want to do is begin to give my input of a person who has done numerology for many years to share with you what I've learned, what I know. No, I don't know everything, but if I can be of help to you, share things with you. And I need to thank Jennifer Kirkland, who's, uh, who is uh, tuning in. And in fact, Jennifer Kirkland is the mother of my goddaughter, Sarah uh, Rosemary Bentham, Kirkland Bentham. Okay, that is her name, born on October the 9th. She's a little, uh, go, uh, one and a half going on two years, uh, who's a fighter and one of the most beautiful ladies on the planet. But most of you ladies are beautiful anyway, if that's what it Okay, but anyway, uh, there's going to be a lot of topics I'm going to be talking about in the weeks and months ahead, such as the cosmic forecast, where I'll be telling you where the moon is for that week. So presently, for example, right now, the sun is in the sign of a, of a cancer. The moon is in the sign of Virgo, okay? So we have a water period and the moon is in an earth uh, element. So water and earth mixes very well. So there's gonna be a lot of things that I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, and so uh, what this is, is also I'm going to be numerology in the news, some of the things that are happening, some of the events. On Saturday, for those that may have missed it, I talked about the unfortunate collapse of the, um, building in uh, the condo down in Florida, where the numbers was 87, 77, uh, explaining that these numbers are moved, see, because each number is ruled by elements. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna be organizing in each and every Wednesday, and Monday and Wednesday, I'm gonna be talking about various topics and like going into details about them. Also give it to readings too. You know, if you got a birthday, uh, or whatever, a question about a loved one or something of that nature, uh, we will definitely uh, do that. Uh, another topic I'm gonna be talking about also, did you know? Uh, did you know this, that, and the other, uh, which I explained, I'm gonna also give you uh, some resources and things of that nature. But one of the things I wanted to do as we start off this official first day is I have some questions that are often asked of me about numerology, first of all, one of the things that people have asked me, is there a relationship and a close one at that between numerology and astrology? And the answer to that question is yes, there is. There's a huge relationship. And what glues the two are the planets. And if one understands the nature of the planet, one would understand the nature of a zodiac sign, one would understand the nature of a number. For example, if I say, that if I talk about the planet of the sun to an astrologer, they would know, oh, you must be talking about the sign of Leo. To a numerologist like myself, you will be talking about the number one. But then you have certain people who have blended both and they have the very skill set. So I happen to be an astro numerologist because my first love was astrology. Then I moved to numerology. So you have astrologers, you have numerologists, and then you have a more rarefied field such as astro numerologists. And I'll be naming some of those that have definitely going into those areas. So that is the two. Now, the next question somebody asked me is, well, which of these came first, numerology or astrology? I wish I could take a hands up and say, 
All right, by those with a choice of hands, who do you think came first, astrology, and who thinks numerology? Well, everybody will have their opinion. Now, let me tell you what my opinion is. I believe, and I know, that numerology came first. I know people saying, yeah, Lloyd, you know you're gonna say that because you're a numerologist, true. But let me tell you why. When you go to an astrologer, professional or whatever astrologer, no matter whether in this country or around the world, they need five pieces of information from you. That is the month you're born, that's a number. The day you're born, that's a number. The year you're born, that's a number. The time you're born, that's a number and the location. Now, for those that say, well, Lord, what do you mean location? Well, for example, you got a person born seven o'clock in New York City. That means if they were born in California at the same time, it would be four o'clock their time. And so therefore the location represents the longitudes and the latitude, latitudes. It's, it's what is called nowadays a GPS, okay? This is why you can put a, an address in a GPS and it'll take you the way it's going because it's configuring the longitude and the latitude of the, the point of where you are to the point of where you need to go. So numerology definitely came first. And I don't care where you go, what language you speak, what culture you believe in, they will always, if you go to a professional astrologer or any astrologer, they will want to know the month, the day, the year, the time, and the location. All of this is transcribed into numbers. Therefore, they can tell you how many degrees your sun sign is in, your moon, your ascendant, your Mercury, your Mars, your Leo, your Pluto, your Neptune, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how it's done. Okay. So yeah, numerology came first. Okay. So now um, in numerology, another question they asked me is why are the name and the numbers uh, important and how do you analyze them? Well, the one thing that got me into numerology is this. Most of the sciences, metaphysically speaking, um, deal with your birthday, okay? What hooked me on numerology is that it also deals with your name. So for example, when I was uh, when I was on TV shows, which I still do and radio shows and whatnot, so after people get off, they'll talk about they sign, yeah, you so-and-so, you so-and-so, this number, whatever. But then they get back to, yeah, Louis, yeah, Lloyd, yeah, Susie, less so-and-so. And so they start getting into names. Well, the beauty of numerology is this. Not only does it take in consideration your birthday, like astrology, but it also takes into consideration your name as well. In, in your birthday, the birthday is like your destiny. It tells you why you're here. It's like, it's like the pupil in life. You know, we, a lot of times we ask when you know what hit the fan, okay? And then we wanna know why, why me? But at the same time, at the same time, what happens is that uh, uh, your birthday will then tell you various seasonal ebbs and flows of life. Your name though is like the teacher. Your name indicates your natural talents, your gifts, your skills, your abilities. So even if you didn't go to school, your name gives you a strong clue. And it also indicates the likelihood of the zodiac sign of the parent that named you by either way of their zodiac sign or their date of birth in fact or the person that they wind up marrying or loving or being engaged to, or even up to do their, do their offsprings. So this is what really fascinated me because I've been on all the shows you can name from Oprah Winfrey to this, that, and other shows, Katie Couric, you name it, all the radio stations across the country and around the world too, for that matter. But everything after they listen to the birthday, eventually get back to the name, okay? But that name has more power than you can imagine. So when Shakespeare says, what's in the name? The response was simply everything because it unlocks a lot of the natural talents, gifts and abilities that each of us possess inside. That's the beauty of it. So with numerology, you know, I don't care how famous uh, an athlete, uh, uh, an entertainer or whatever it is, you are just as important and you have your own gifts that you bring to the table. I think one of the challenges is we are so busy kind of looking at everybody else's backyard that we forget to look in our own backyard, to look under our own feet to see what we have, what we can bring into this world ourselves. Okay, the next question somebody asked was, is numerology easy to learn? Yes, it is, and that's, and that's how I got hooked. Let me explain. When, um, when I got to numerology, was introduced to it, the numbers go from one to nine. I says, okay. I got 10 fingers, I got this, okay? It was just that simple for me, I got this, 
okay? But what happens is a person will say, what about 10? Well, one plus zero is back to one. What about 11? One plus one is back to two. So the point is that numerology just goes from one to nine. And the beauty of it, since I wasn't the best math student on the planet at that time coming up as a kid, that the 90% of it or more, probably close to almost 97% is addition. So in numerology, there was a technique called the phatic system, F-A-D-I-C. Here's what it means. The phatic system in numerology means that you got two numbers, you got to reduce it until you got one number standing. So let's say mm, number 25, right? Well, that's the number. However, in numerology, you got to take it one step further and say two plus seven equals nine. That's what got me hooked, okay? Let's say another person is born on the 27th. Well, two plus seven is nine, just that simple. Now, here are the two days to confuse people for beginners numerologists or people are interested in numerology. A person will say, well, I'm born on the 28th, two plus eight is 10. They are absolutely under the phatic system, you got to go one step further. And therefore, two plus eight is 10 and one plus zero is one. The next date is like that, the following date, the 29th. What do you mean? Well, two plus nine is 11, Lloyd. That's it. They're technically right. Except now for those who know about the master numbers, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you got to keep reducing. My whole goal right now is to keep things simple. Some of the topics up the road of this of, of uh, Live with Lloyd, we'll be talking about the master numbers and everything else for that matter. But right now, it is about just keeping it simple so you can catch on. This is this is what got me and says, ah, oh, this is this is easy. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's how it is. It is very, very easy to learn. It is simple as one, two, three, pardon the pun. OK. One of the other questions is there are is there only one number um, uh, that affects the life of the person. Actually, it's yes or no. Actually, there's several numbers, um, at which you'll find out also too. Uh, it all depends. Um, it all depends on the name, the birthday of the person. There is the destiny number that indicates that. And I think I might touch on that before uh, we get off the program this evening. And uh, there are also numbers that tells you what the cycle you're in and things of that nature. So it is a series. Uh, there is one number for this. There's also a number for your name. And so it's a matter of synthesizing all that information together. So there is one basic number. I will explain that. That comes from your date of birth. So if a person said they were born on the eighth of the month, that is their main number. That is their constant number. That is the number, that's like the, the compass that points north to that particular person. So if a person says I'm born on the 14th, like today, or well, one plus four is five, that's their number that points north for them. If a person is born under a number two, well, that is the number that points north for them as well. But then there's the destiny number, which comes from the month, the day, and the year they're born. Then there is the personal year number that comes from the present cycle that you're in, like, for example, 2021. So that's one thing. Okay, let me see what else that was asked. They said, do you need a degree to learn numerology? No, not at all. You don't even need a GED. If you know how to count from one to nine, and you have an interest, you can learn this. And I think that's one of the things that got me hooked. Again, as I said, I wasn't the best math student in school, okay? So I said, nah, uh, do you need a degree or whatever? You do not. If you got the right aptitude, attitude, and have a, uh, a bent for learning, as I have learning the esoteric side of numbers, because no matter what we do, we deal with numbers every day, whether we interact with buying gas or getting breakfast or punching a button on the elevator or answering the phone or making a phone call. We all interacting with numbers, especially when one is getting their paycheck. Okay. Those numbers really count, but there are other numbers too. And especially from the esoteric side of it. And when you understand that, that makes a big, big difference. Okay. So, um, but it is about numbers and learning them and doing them back. Uh, also, what about finding a teacher? Well, I got to be honest, in the days I started, there weren't that many teachers, but there were teachers in astrology, old school brothers that I knew, but there wasn't hardly any in numerology. 
So what happened is at that time, I was blessed to be born here in New York City, where they had a lot of metaphysical bookstores, Wise's Bookstore, Mason's Bookstore down on Lexington Avenue in the 60s. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I was able to go to these stores. And because I had a love of reading, they were like my teachers. Nowadays, fast forward to the 21st century, you got the internet. And when I was doing it, it was called Interwho. It wasn't, you didn't even know about internet, Interwho. So nowadays, it's almost no excuse for not finding good teachers. And there are good teachers really everywhere you go. And in fact, um, for example, like here in New York, you could, there's Number Swami, okay? Then there's Gail Armstead, my brother, King Simon, who is the best of the best in this field. Then I got Brandon Smith, okay? There's Jackie Levine, uh, who has written the book. And, and it also has an online numerology course, and I'll talk about that later on too. Then in New Jersey, there's there's my longtime associate and colleague, Kalia Washington. She's been doing this for like, well, we ain't gonna tell, but she's been doing this for a long time. And she's one of the best of the best, okay? Up in Boston, for example, there's Matthew Walker, a gentleman I know who's the number seven like I am. In Chicago, there's Chanel Phillips, okay? Then in Chicago, there's a Kaya French. There is a Dominic 369. There is the Hood Mystic. In uh, New Mexico, there's even my buddy Francis Revels Bay. And Francis Revels Bay and I have one distinction. We both came from and cut our teeth on the corner of, well, at UCLA, okay? Not UCLA in California. It was called the University on the corner of Lenox Avenue in Harlem, known as the Tree of Life. That's where Francis Revels Bay and I got our start. It was there through Kanye, Dr. Moore, uh, John Harris and a lot of people that really turned our lives around that has led us to being the best that we are in this business. So um, these are just some of them. And by the way, for those of you who might live in Philly or Cali or Memphis or wherever, if you know of a person, and by the way, uh, also in Atlanta, there's Lorenzo Sanford. I want to make sure I mention him too. Okay. But I'm sure that whatever state you live in, they, they have their own astrologers and numerologists, but if you can share them with me in the time and up the road, when I start bringing on guests, I would like to bring them so they can share their knowledge. So people in the area can say, oh, they're right in my neighborhood. I can reach out to them for consultation, okay? I'm about sharing, that's that's how my world operates. Uh, we, we're all in this together. So if you can do that, that would be very helpful. I promise I'll share that. Now, um, I think I answered all the questions. Oh, oh. Um, does numerology tell you about matters of romance, love, business, uh, health, travel? Yes, it does. And as you go along with me, I'm actually going to be kind of taking snippets from my online class and from my books. And we'll talk about different topics so you can see, yes, you can find your soulmate. Yes, there is the best time to make your money. Yes, there is the best time to travel. Yes, and there are better times than others to be on top of your health. And did you know that each number rules of health? That's the subject we're going to be talking about. That each number rules certain herbs and fruits and vegetables. We're going to be talking about that. That each of these numbers rule crystals and gemstones and things of that nature and even colors. We're going to be talking about all of these things as we go up the road. So I've got to get kind of like acclimated to this. I know where all my buttons are and all that stuff. And so right now I'm... And I'm not going to front. I'm definitely new at this, but I'm excited about bringing all these possibilities to you. OK. And the people I name, many of the people I name that you can find as teachers will also eventually be my guests. So you can solicit their services and you can find out certain things that makes them who they are. All righty. And uh, also does. Oh, and one last thing is, does numerology go against religion? No, it does not. And in fact, people often equate numerology and religion as one and the same. It is totally, totally not at all. Religion is a belief, which is why man goes to war, because they think their God is better than your God, okay? Numerology and astrology are sciences and they're ancient African sciences at that, let's be clear, okay? So, so with, and when I tell people that the Bible is a numerology book, some get offended. But let me say, if you, you go into um, open the Bible, I'll say Psalms 23 verses two through seven. Notice I had to give it to you in numbers. If you look at the Old Testament, 
the fourth book of Moses is called the book of Numbers, where Moses is instructed by God to name the armies on the second day of the second month by their name and their poem. Okay. Also, if you go further into the uh, the chapter, the fourth book of Moses, the 12 tribes of Israel that they talk about representing the 12 months and whatnot. Well, the 12 tribes of Israel, each of them are given their own respective number. Then if you swing over to the last chapter of the last part of the Bible of Revelation, they will say, this is the mark of man. It is the mark of the beast. The number is 666. But then further down into that chapter of Revelation, they talk about Christ in a more in a symbolic term, which is 888. So when I say the Bible is a numerology book, some may be offended, but don't. I defy you to find me a verse or chapter without guiding me through some number. You can't do it. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm going to have my buddy on Brandon Smith, who wrote a unique book called Namaste to Numbers. The brother is a, a pastor. His father was a pastor. His grandfather was a pastor. And his father before that was a pastor. But this young brother has a unique way of breaking these numbers down so it relates. So for those of you who feel that, well, this goes against God or do, 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 it's not that at all. Uh, but he has a way of breaking it down in a very logical, simplistic way of doing it. All righty. So I think that is it. So let me uh, start with my little topic for today and, and we'll get this. Let me see. Where is it? Okay. Um, one of them is the topic for today is how does numerology work? Also, how to find your destiny number. And I might go into the person here, but I think I might leave it at that. How does numerology work? Numerology works on the set of, on the principle of numbers. Each number has a frequency or vibration. Now, when I say they have a vibration or frequency, it sounds like, you know, more esoteric and whatnot. But let me give you an example. When people look, look, uh, tune into their favorite radio station or their TV show, is it not that each TV emulates a frequency? So like here in New York, there's a WBLS 107.5, WLIB 11190. Um, in Washington, there's WKYS. Uh, you know, with all these numbers assigned to them. What they're saying is that these numbers have a frequency level that allows you to listen to your show versus a person who want to listen to a different show. Okay? So you can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't taste it. But these frequencies exist. Well, on the spiritual realm, numerology does the same thing. It sends out a frequency once you know how to read the numbers that help guide you. And once, and I will show you, once you know how to do this, you will learn how to be in the right place at the right time in perfect harmony with the universe. And when I bring other guests on to express their expertise in this field and other related fields in the esoteric sciences, you will see that there is, there is it's almost magic to this. It's, it's just really, really great, okay? Um, but numerology works on the principle of these numbers and it works on the principle of the birthday and when I say that, that's taking the month, the day, and the year you're born. Actually, it's, it's really more than that, which is why I have an online course on this subject. Uh, Jackie Levine also has an online course on this subject. King Simon also has an online course on this subject. And, uh, and, and they, But they are. And so what it does is it teaches you that it works in two segments. Your birthday, why you're here. And your name, what God-given talent you have has translated magically from those letters of your name into numbers, all right? And so we will be doing demonstrations, I, I think maybe next week, because don't forget every Monday, every Friday, every Wednesday, we'll be doing this. And by the way, if somebody says, oh, Lloyd says, uh, like, share, like, share, uh, what does it say? Like, share, push the bell button, um, subscribe. Yeah. So subscribe. Okay. Push a button. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. And share only if you want to, it, it'd be nice to, and you should share because this is this that I'm sharing with you is actually so profound. So, so deep that you would be surprised and yet so simplistically easy. Okay. And, uh, as I said, it will do you wonder. So, uh, please like share, subscribe and push the bell button. If, if there's one, um, Anyway, anyway, I'll let y'all figure that out. Anyway, though, so numerology works on that principle that it deals with your birthday. Now, you, from your birthday, it's like leading up to your destiny number. Almost all beginning numerologists learn their destiny number 
life path number, birth path number. They call them different names, okay? But the point is that no matter what interchangeable name they call this, there is the month, the day, and the year you're born. So if you take that, that tells you what your destiny is. So I'm going to take a person, let's say there be a February 14th, 1980 okay so what i do when i take this as six nine nine one this person destiny number is a is that right did i do that right yes their destiny number adds up to 25 and two plus five is seven so that means this person born on february the 14th of 1980 is has a seven destiny number that's their destiny number when you add up the month the day and the year you got one too so just don't say, oh, this person, February 14, 1980, got hers. No, you got yours too. You just have to add yours up. You may not be born on this month, day, and year. But whatever month, day, and year you have or are born on, you just add those three digits, and then you can calibrate the destiny. And the destiny means what you're here to learn, what you're here to master from the time we enter this world until the time we leave. Because from the womb to the tomb, you are a number, and you cannot get around it. Numbers will invade your life in more ways than you can ever imagine. So why not understand the more esoteric side of numerology as well? So this person has a seven destiny, which means they're in the seventh grade in the school of life. Now I have several books that I've written on the subject and these will happen and, and you've got many numerologists so you can go on online courses. Uh, last, last time on Saturday, I just touched on them briefly uh, and the topics ahead, I'll be going into them in a more specific way. All righty. And I'm going to want people to leave their birthday. So if you want to know your destiny, we'll definitely do it. If you want to know what you're here to learn or master, we will also share that. Uh, but importantly, not only do you know about yourself, but the people in your space, your loved ones, your children, your mates, even your frenemies and enemies too, which is, oh, that's why I don't like you. Okay. So you want to know all these things. And, and it's not so like, don't like them in a hating way or a hateful way don't like them in the way that you now have an understanding why sometimes the chemistry just so match and it's, it's nothing personal every that's like saying everybody's got to get up the same time every morning no everybody's got to go to bed at the same time no everybody's got their own rhythm and the point is about finding your rhythm as against being in anybody else's business and their rhythm and once you find your rhythm things will work out greatly for you so that is how you find your destiny and then I'll leave with one more thing, how to find your personal year. Well, as you know, when you want to find your destiny or birth path or life path, what you do is you take the month you're born, the day you're born, and the year you're born, right? Well, when you want to find what psych you're in for 2021, you do the same thing with one exception. You take the month you're born, the day you're born, and the year you want to know about, which is right now. So let's take this person that I gave as an example, February 14th. Now I want to add 2021. And so that's 750. Oh, so this person, oh, this person, let me see. 7, yep, 302. So this person will be in a three personal year this year. Okay. And so each number represents conditions of things. I like the personal year because it tells me the mindset that you're going through the conditions of things around you, the people that are likely come into the person's life. So in this case, for example, this person born February the 14th, when I add it to this year, that tells me a couple of things that one, the year is significant because not only is 2021, when you add those four numbers, add up to a five, this person that I spoke about is born on the 14th is a five. Today is the 14th, one plus four is five. And you'll learn on the course ahead that each number rules a day and the five rules Wednesday. So a person born on the 14th of the month, the 23rd of the month, because two plus three is five, or even the fifth day of the month, this will be a very special day for them because the date matches their number. And it just happens that the number is falling on its own day. It's like the number has found its own home during the week, which is in this case, the number five on a Wednesday. Okay. So this is how you determine your destiny. Now, there will be some times when your destiny number, which is the month, the day, and the year you're born, will match the same as your personal year number. So that means when, so that means you're really in lockstep with the universe. And so what it means is this, when you're having good years, they are good. And when you're not having good years, 
Well, they're not all that good, okay? So, so, it, so there are many blessings and challenges that come with certain things you have. All of these things you're gonna learn. So as I wrap up, I wanna just, uh, okay, uh, share, like, subscribe, and push the button, okay? Thank you. So um, I'll get used to this, don't worry. Uh, as references, I have books, okay? Uh, these are some of my books, okay? This is, this is the Bible, this is what got me started, Numbers in You, a numerology guide to everyday living, okay? Then I have a workbook that goes in lockstep with my course, Learn from Lloyd how to read a person like a book. You don't have to take the course. This is a, a thing where you can just learn just the basics. It's like a primer, so to speak, all right? Now, because people are always asking me about relationships, guess what? I've got Lloyd's Book of Numbers and You Relationship Guide, okay? It's the joy of relationships and why you can get along with one person. Now, when I say relationships, people think it's always boyfriend, girlfriend. No. This relationship you have with your brothers, your cousins, relatives, your neighbors, your the, the people where you shop at, okay? Um, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, coworkers, husbands, wives, children. So, you know, and people think when I say relationships, they always can screw it as boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. No, we are always in a relationship. From the moment we enter this earth, our first relationship with our mom, then our dad, then brothers and sisters, then nieces and nephews and cousins, then grandmothers and grandfathers, then as we get older, then our friends, and then our buddies, our hanging buddies at school, then our girlfriend, boyfriends, then we get jobs, it's our boss, our coworkers. So we're always constantly in some type of relationship. And so people have to understand that I'm taking this in a broader, broader text, but relationship-wise too, like the best, best, uh, best person for me, or should I run to the nearest exit? That's what this book is for. And then finally, I've got this book too. It's called Lloyd's Book of Numbers, okay? You can get all these on amazon.com, all right? And this is this is like the Bible. This is actually an update of uh, this book here, okay? So this was published years ago, and this was published just a few years ago. But this is the Bible. So if I'm saying, if you gotta get all, all any of them, get this one first. And not only that, it's the least expensive too. Alrighty, I also do sessions uh, for, I do have a website. It is called lloyd-strayhorn.com. That's L-L-O-Y-D-strayhorn, S-T-R-A-Y-H-O-R-N.com. And when you go there, uh, sign up for the free monthly newsletter. I have a partner in Detroit, Kaya French. She and I do the monthly newsletter every month. So July just came out. So since we just, what, uh, 14 days into the month with about 16, 17 more days ago, okay? Why don't you sign up? It's absolutely free. All you gotta do, you can either visit her site, knowyournumbers. No, hers is kayafrench.com, K-Y-A-F-R-E-N-C-H. Uh, so you can go to hers, kayafrench.com, go to hers, sign up over there, or if you want to come here, but the point is, you'll get a free monthly newsletter. You can also go to my website and schedule a session to see me. Uh, by the way, also on that, uh, my website, I also offer an online course there too. One is for beginners called Learn From Lloyd, How to Read a Person Like a Book, okay? And that will tell you the basics that I've been talking about. And some of this will either be coming from part of the online course that I have that I'll be sharing online with you, as well as from the book. And then I have another course called Learn From Lloyd, The Next Step in Numerology. Now this one is more for intermediate and advanced. And oftentimes these courses that I offer are on sale for less than a course of lunch for two people, okay? It happens maybe once or twice a month. So visit my site, lloyd-strayhorn.com and then sign, scroll down and you see, sign up for the course. You'll see me sitting at the table holding some of these books I've shared and just sign up for the course. It's easy to learn. You will get a, cert a certification or certificate saying that you've taken the course and that you've actually passed the course too. All righty. Uh, what else I got? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, I'm on Facebook. Okay. And by the way, on Facebook, I even have a numerology group called Learn from Lloyd. All right. So if you go there, you can join the group. Now, I haven't been up to date with it, but since I'm now starting this, I will be more active. I'll be getting you more engaged in it. So if you want to learn the numerology, some of the first steps, just sign on to Facebook, Numbers in You, 
and sound on the group, learn from Lloyd dot, uh, learn from Lloyd numerology group. Okay. Uh, what else am I on? Um, yeah, numerology group, media sites, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Clubhouse. Alrighty. So that is it for now. And I will look forward to seeing you every Monday, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. with live with Lloyd, where the joy of numerology is the joy of learning and enlightenment. Because let me tell you, by the time we finish, and if you can take this journey with me over the weeks and months and maybe years ahead, who knows, that you will be so enlightened about understanding your environment, your world, the people you deal with, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And, if, and, and actually, this will make you have more of an appreciation for the reverence for the most high than anything else, seriously. And again, this does not go against the laws of religion, because I will end on this one. For people who think it does, I ask them a question. Name me a war since Cain killed Abel, that's the first murder, okay, in the Bible. Name me a war fought in the name of a zodiac sign. They can't. Name me a war fought in the name of Aquarius. Name me a war fought in the name of Capricorn or Taurus or Pisces or Gemini or Leo or Cancer or Virgo. They can't. You cannot. Name me a war since man has come upon this earth in the name of a number one. You can't name me a war, uh, uh, name me a war that's fought in the name of the number seven or war that's fought in the name of the number eight or nine or one through three, four, five, six on through. So my attitude for the religious bodies that sometimes have problems with what I do, and I don't see why for the life of me, when the Bible is a numerology book in and of itself, I don't see why for the life of me that they will say, you know, that that makes sense. And at least what I do don't kill anybody, okay? It doesn't take your life. It doesn't try to wipe a nation of people off this planet, okay? Under the pretext that my God is better than your God. So what I'm saying is, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Lloyd Strayhorn. I'm an astronumerologist. And you have been joining me with Live with Lloyd, where the joy of numerology, as I said, is the joy of learning and enlightenment. So let's stay enlightened. Let's learn. Let's live and be in the right place at the right time in perfect harmony with the universe. So until then, y'all have a blessed, blessed day. Take good care of yourselves. And by the way, any questions, suggestions, comments, and even criticism, but the criticism, let them be constructive too. You know, as anybody can throw some money, but if you're going to criticize, try to give me a solution too, okay? That would help very, very much, okay? Everybody, thank you. I'm going to leave the studio. All this is new. So right now you're going to see me looking at everything. But about a month or two and now, I'll be just as smooth as my brother, King Simon, okay? He's the best at what he does too. Everybody have a blessed day. Thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. This has been fun.